First interesting news of the day, especially for my fellow Playboy Carty fans out there. Um, the day has finally come where we kind of discovered what this narcissist project was all about, or this narcissist rollout. Essentially, Playboy Carty on Instagram was posting some pretty incredible fits, I have to say, because again, I'm a big fan of Vetema. I'm a big fan of Denmark. And, you know, in my opinion, I still think he's one of the greatest designers of our of our of the modern era, right? I kind of go as far as saying that his run at Vetema was legendary, which led him, of course, to get the big gig at Balenciaga now he's left Vetemoff in the last collection might have been 2019 around that mark and he's gone to do bigger bigger and brighter things at Balenciaga obviously reintroducing um, Couture the other the other season but um, it seems like there's been a bit of a Vetemoff resurgence Playboy Carty posted up some incredible pictures of himself wearing some great archive quote-unquote um, Vetemoff pieces kind of um, reigniting the love and the appeal of the early Vetema stuff and it was kind of captioned with you know narcissists coming I think 9 13 and um, 21 which obviously is going to be the 13th of September and everyone was kind of thinking it was definitely some sort of music maybe not an album maybe an EP maybe a single but I don't think anybody thought it was going to be what transpired right now and Playboy Carter fans are completely up in arms and I completely understand me myself personally again I followed because, you know, I've got the advantage of being a DJ. So I kind of, by my requisite quote-unquote job or the career or the field of interest I'm in, I have a, a diverse uh, palette of music that I listen to on a daily basis. I've been to Download Festival, which is a really popular metal festival here in the UK. I go to Primavera. I've listened to loads of various different types of music. So with that being said, I'm exposed to different sort of artists who are divas and a bit eccentric and a little bit weird in their own way. So I'm kind of used to this this kind of treatment like this kind of um, ambivalence and somewhat um oh i don't know is it ambivalence what else you call it this somewhat um disregard that playboy carty seems to have for his fans i'm quite used to it but i think a lot of hip-hop fans aren't really used to it especially nowadays in the era where most of your artists are you know just an instagram live away from updating you on their life letting you know what they're doing with their album what it seems what they want to go in their career right most artists do that but for someone like a playboy carty he obviously kind of bucks the trends and does things his own way he doesn't really talk to the media does interviews i think the last round of interviews he did was for was for Die Lit, right? The last round of interviews I think he might have done. Um, he doesn't really do interviews, not even print ones really. Or well, he does print interviews sometimes if they're for like fashion magazines. He does a lot of fashion, you know, posts, of course. He's got that great connection with Matthew Williams at Alix and now at Givenchy. He's rocking head to toe Rick Owen most of the time. He's like a, what they call him, a gay vampire, right? He's a little bit in his own world. So he doesn't really, you know, move to the beat of like, you know, a standard musician would. So, but then at the same token, because everyone assumed that there was music coming out, I think his team and himself kind of owed it to the fans, especially considering his radio silence and considering how many times he delays stuff and it doesn't drop when it's meant to drop. He maybe owed it to the fans when they started to get a bit too excited and get a little bit ahead of themselves to come out and say, hey, what you think this is going to be isn't going to be what it's going to be. It's completely different. But again, in this era that we live in now at the moment, everyone is kind of infected by the viral virus. Everyone loves the attention because it's hard to get. You don't want to pay for it because you're going to be paying through the nose to get that kind of level of attention. Whether it's ads on IG or Facebook or whatever, it's pricey to get people's eyes and ears to pay attention to stuff that you can do. So if you could do it organically without really trying, but just announcing things and posting a couple of fit pics of you wearing a helmet next to a very austere wall, you're definitely going to lap it up. You're not going to clarify anything because you like the attention and it's bringing more eyes to the things that you're going to announce, which might be a letdown regardless. But still, the fact that they're paying attention is good. But I still think he may be owed it to the fans to basically clarify and say, hey, by the way, it's not going to be that. I'm not going to say what it's going to be, but it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. It's not an EP, it's not an album, it's not any music. It's going to be a merch store, what it looks like, and a tour itself. That's what basically the tour is called, Narcissist Tour, which is weird considering um, his album, you know. But hey, whatever, we can, we move. So this headline here for Hip Hop DX, it says, Playboy Carti blames website hackers, fans, clown narcissist merch, including the 5K helmet, right? So if that wasn't bad enough, I think the tour is cool. Um, the idea behind I the word narcissist, I think people, some of the law around Playboy Carti is that that was one of the things that Iggy Azalea basically, um, you know, held him in terms of abuse when they were going through that little spat online. That's something she said about him, or I think she must have said it in like a in like one of those kind of, what were they called, in like a subtweet thing randomly and everyone kind of deduced that it probably was about Playboy Carti. So he's obviously taking that moniker and kind of worn it on his chest as, as most agent provocateurs usually do, right? Wherever you call them as a sort of, um, as a sort of, uh, 
whatever you hurl at them that's meant to insult them they usually kind of wear it on their chest as a sense of empowerment so he's kind of kind of you know operating from the play from the county west playbook in that regard but anyway the article says the following the, the fans obviously are not happy about this because again you know it's all well and good doing a tour but then dropping a, a merch line with a 5k helmet that you can get on alibaba is absolutely insane so this is the following Playboy Carty Narcissist, which turned out to be merch, not new, our new album, finally arrived on Tuesday, September the 14th. But the hyped up release didn't go as planned for the Atlanta rapper or his fans. Following numerous social media teasers, Playboy Carty online store was updated with what fans were told led to believe was a new Narcissist merch collection. The racing inspired range included a bomber jacket, $200, a hoodie, 110 long sleeve, 50 and a Ski Marks 14 motorcycle, gloves, 75 The piece de resistance of Carty's collection was a black motorcycle helmet that came with a hefty, 5k price tag now the reason why this is really interesting i know sometimes people have different names for their tours as they have their album but usually there's some kind of tie-in between what they do for their album and what they do for their tour but a whole lot of red i don't really remember there being any kind of hint that it had some sort of racing you know um kind of displays or signage or symbolism anything there wasn't anything about that nothing incognito about the thing at all this new incognito wearing a mask and being a little bit mysterious thing came more so after whole or red whole or red was quite in your face you know action-packed stage um influence pop, pop no stage influence punk right hip-hop influence but what Hip, punk influence hip hop whatever it may be called right is that way around or hip hop influence punk hip hop influence, whatever it may be you never really got the idea that it was motorcycle inspired though. Do you know I mean this would have made more sense in die lit as opposed to whole lot of red but you know whatever he continues says however and they got, he got here the collection looks pretty run of the mill just a couple of blanks you know plastered on with some screen printing here and there then maybe the face mask might be a good thing because i think it might be the first time you could buy one of these sort of like kanye s face masks that you can go incognito around in and i really want one so i can go to you know a techno club somewhere and be a little bit incognito i think that would be flipping awesome i'm sure it's not going to be the most comfortable thing to wear in a nightclub but i'll try Article continues, it says, however, one particular observant fan quickly smelled something fishy. He pointed out the pricey helmet listed on Playboy Carter's e-store appeared to be exact same one used a product image a significantly cheaper a helmet metal sorry helmet featured on a Chinese retailer see I knew that was right Alibaba it says Carly really said let's get a $29 Chinese motorcycle helmet with a flat logo photoshopped on top for 5k fuck them kids he wrote the same fan also noticed a 40 pin scale mask from the merch collection used the same photo of a mask retailing for 0.545p oh, okay you can get those masks already in Alibaba sick on Alibaba Okay, I had no idea. So he's got here, he's got, he's showing here that the motorcycle helmet can be purchased on a Chinese um, shop. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's called Shopee.bw or something along those kind of lines, right? There we go. Shopee.tw. But it's obviously retailed for 5K on there. And then the actual mask. Oh, look, they actually photoshopped it. Look what they've done. So obviously, this mask, they're obviously going to maybe make it or edit it. But they've taken the stock image of the mask you can get at Alibaba and just kind of filled it. I guess inside with black so to make it look like it's one of those um yeezy donda era face mask that is so horrid isn't it the bomber jacket exact same one you can get what down to wrinkle from where the bomber jacket too to be honest this is not a surprise i don't think you're buying merch under the guise that these guys are creating like a little streetwear brand launched thing if anything merch has always been a kind of way for you to show appreciation for the artist or album or tour that you listened or you're a fan of or you went to wherever that's mostly what it is so if they print a, a cover of the image on the back of a hoodie on a tote bag on a flipping mug on the jacket on the hat it doesn't matter really right it can be in anything now the difference comes when they try and price it like it's a streetwear line like it's a fashion line right that's where it gets a bit out of order that's where you're like okay now you're taking a piss um it's all well and good you know again selling your album cover on a bit of merch and giving it to people on different bits of clothing that they might want to wear but then pricing it like it's actually a brand anything is absolutely wild so you know two hundred dollars five thousand dollars for the helmet is nuts maybe a couple of money on top of it to make sure you're covering all your you know screen printing importing delivery stuff fair but you know 5 10 20 x the actual price listed that you actually got it you know from the factories is insane it's kind of occupying that virgil abloh territory where he did with the rugby flannels which again is dubious too isn't it is that is that is that something that you should be moaning about if he's the one that goes out and buys these rugby flannels they then become out they then become um dead stock oh no they then become um 
Is that archive? Oh no, he basically sells them out. He buys the entire stock of these particular jackets. He prints a thing on them. These jackets are really popular. You can't get them anymore. Then he prices them what he prices at. It's a it's basically in that respect, it's a seller's market because there's this scarcity of supply. So you can sell it at what he wants. It's scummy, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit immoral, especially when you're for the kids. But the game is a game really, isn't it? Some people shouldn't be that surprised, I think. Oh, it's gonna open. I didn't want to open a window. Please open a window. Okay, cool, let's continue. Is that where's there any more? I think that might be it, isn't it? Is that it? Is that it? I think that might be no, it's not. There's more here. It shows again the bomber jacket with Nazis printed on the front chest. Paper Kai posting dates on his Instagram while his fans went crazy thinking it was an album. Only to say nothing on the day and then drop 5k on it. It's got me crying. There, nigga done lost his mind. As more fans began to take notice, the irregularities around the Nazis and merch, Playboy Carti pointed the finger at hackers while claiming he never approved any of the items. He since pulled the merch from his site. So allegedly he's saying that hackers hacked into his site and listed these items on there. But he didn't, which might have some credence to it because that face mask is just, that's just terrible, right? They didn't even try to hide the fact that it was a banner clava they got from Alibaba. They just basically, you know, um, filled in the white bits to make it look like it was one of those Donda masks. That's terrible. So he might be correct, but I smell cap. I'm not going to lie. I smell a big piling stinking doo-doo worth of crap and of cap sorry of crap crap and cap he actually posted a um a status on his twitter on his instagram which is definitely an indication that maybe it is legit because he never posts anything in terms of clarifying or informing his fans it's just here it is it's out listen digest here buy tickets here buy this merch so the fact that he's explaining might mean that he's you know a little bit uh he feels a little bit bad for what's happened but I don't think so. <laughs> to be completely honest, I don't think he does feel bad. <laughs> I think he just kind of operates in his own world and he's probably not even aware of what's going on. This might even be his team. It might not even be something that he's doing himself directly. But let's check it out. It looks like he's changed the profile picture of his, his Twitter too, it looks like. And changed his, um, what do you call it, his name on there too. It's SVJ now. Um, yeah, it says here, this is a conversation between two people. He's doing a Kanye. You can tell he's going to be hanging around with Kanye. He's just uploading a screenshot of a of a conversation he had with two people where it says, the website is hacked, the ref folder was posted live, never approved any of the clothing, etc. I don't know who he's talking to, but I guess he's sending a message to somebody to let them know that that, that wasn't true. And then going back to the thing, Paper Kai fans will be resolution... No, Paper Fire fans were hoping for a resolution to the merch mix-up before Nelson's tour kicks off next month. The 43 Cities Arena tour gets underway in Nashville. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. So the question I have to say is that it's really difficult to be a fan of an artist nowadays, especially the ones who kind of adopt this kind of mysterious um, kind of um, persona in their artwork, like a Paper Kai, because essentially you're just having to just... Um, there is no... Um, how would you say there's not like interaction but there's no like give and take it's just like he gives you what he wants to give you and you digest it how you want to digest but there's no kind of sympathy extended to the fans there's no understanding there's no explanations there's no clarifications there's no heads ups it's just whatever i give you this is what you're gonna get and that's it you move on for some artists that would be ideal i think if you're some of the bigger artists and you're having to go and do crazy press runs and stuff you're probably looking at paper car thinking bloody i wish i had that kind of career but he's not that guy right he's not the weekend um so that's so that shouldn't be a bother he has he doesn't have mad press um uh responsibilities that he has to do right he doesn't really have many things that he does outside of music by the looks of it he just kind of concentrates on music and the fashion sort of stuff so if that's the case being able to maybe send out a tweet just to clarify to your fans that like, hey that album you think i'm going to be putting out which you if you know me as an artist you know i'm not going to put out another album so soon after my other one is not coming i'm just you know but be be patient what's going to announce is still going to be fun anyway then at least they know okay stop the music it, whatever else come after they're going to be happy with it and then maybe you wear your merch a couple of times show it off just to kind of of course advertise it some more that is okay but remaining dead silent enjoying all the hype and all the clicks and all the tension it's getting you and then turning around and saying you got hacked is a little bit lame because again we have to believe that a hacker hacked into his site not to extract information to post some places that like other people do. They kind of, you know, they take flipping leaks of his and sell them and, you know, flip them and put them on Spotify or whatever, right? They do, it's a real, like, little black market um, uh, around Playboy Carty leaks and whatnot. They didn't try and do that. They just went up there and basically uploaded merch that they think would sell well um, according to the artists themselves on there. That just doesn't make any sense. Right? I mean, it's hard to believe. It might be true, but it definitely is hard to believe. So it's definitely, it's difficult to be a Playboy Carty fan, but I guess for a lot of people out there, I'll say, 
say, as I said, as I'm a fan of many genres and I have a, a lot of artists who I follow who are very obnoxious, insufferable and a bit of a, and, and it can be cunts at times outside of the music. It's just one of those things you're just going to have to, especially once you get older, you're going to have to decide, can you separate the art from the artist? Can you separate the fact that Playboy Carti seems, seems like a little bit of a prick, right? And he's, but then he does make really good music. And if you're able to do that, you'll be able to enjoy his artistry a lot more because you just go into it purely for the art and you're low and you won't care about how he treats his missus. You won't care about if he's a deadbeat dad. You won't care if he doesn't update his fans. You won't care about that. You just concentrate directly on the tunes. And that's what maybe you should be doing. Do you know what I mean? Because that's, that's basically what he's presenting himself to the world as. He's not telling you, you know, about himself in private life or what about his, who he is about with his family and stuff. He's presenting to you as Playboy Carti, this kind of enigmatic, mysterious, black hip hop vampire guy. And if that's all right with you, that's okay. If not, bound to go to another artist that's willing to kind of open, you know, their diary and let you know and tell you exactly what else is going on in their life, innit? But that's what it is to be a Playboy Carti in flipping 2021, innit? Ups and downs.